Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to show you how you can use a pre-trained neural network to perform face detection. And to do that, we're going to be using the OpenCV framework that will allow us to read in a pre-trained model and perform inference using that model. So to get started, um, there's a little bit of code here at the top of the script that sets the device index for the camera, creates a video capture object, and then uh, creates an output window for sending all the results to the display. However, since we've covered this in a prior video, uh, we're going to skip uh, that discussion and uh, focus our attention here on line 47. So OpenCV has several convenience functions that allow us to read in pre-trained models that were trained using various frameworks. So for example, CAFE, TensorFlow, uh, DarkNet, and PyTorch are all deep learning frameworks that allow you to design and train neural networks. And thankfully, OpenCV has built-in functionality to use pre-trained networks to perform inference. Uh, so just to be clear, you cannot use OpenCV to train a neural network, but you can use it to perform inference on a pre-trained network. And that's very nice for getting familiar uh, with using uh, neural networks and getting started. So this function, read net from CAFE, uh, is a function that's uh, specifically designed to uh, read in a CAFE model, and it takes two arguments. Uh, the first argument here is the prototext file, which contains the uh, network architecture information. And then the next file is the CAFE model file, and that's a much larger file that contains the weights of the model that's been trained. So notice here that we're pointing to these files on our local system. Uh, however, it can also be downloaded from the internet. So let's take a look at the, um, the Git repo that contains these models. So here in this repo, uh, there's several scripts uh, at this level. And if you scroll down a bit, uh, you'll see that there's a um, download models script right here. And if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see that there's a readme file here that contains a description and instructions on how to use that script to download various models. So it turns out that that script actually references a um, models.yaml file, which is right here. And it's instructive to go ahead and take a look at uh, that. So at the top of that file, you'll see a block here that references the CAFE model that we're actually going to be using. Uh, here is the uh, URL to download the weights file. And then there's uh, several other parameters here uh, related to how that model was trained. And so we'll talk about these in a minute because we're going to reference these values in our script. But just notice that there's a mean value, a scale factor, a height and width, and also this RGB flag. So let's go back to the script and continue on. When we call this uh, read net from cafe uh, method, it returns for us an instance of the network. And we're going to use that object further below to perform inference on our test images from the video stream. So this next section here is identifying the model parameters that were associated with how the model was trained. And it's important that uh, we're aware of these because uh, any images that we pass through the model to perform inference on also need to be processed uh, in the same way that the training images were processed. So here we have the size of the input images that were used to train the model, 300 by 300. And then here we have a list of mean values uh, from each of the color channels across all the images that were used uh, in training. And then this competence threshold uh, is a value that you can set that will uh, determine the sensitivity of your detections. So then uh, scrolling down here a bit further, we enter this while loop. And uh, the first thing we do in the loop is uh, read one frame at a time from the video feed. And on line 59, I'm going to flip that frame horizontally just as a convenience for myself so that when I point to things in the field of view of the camera, it's easier for me to do that. But it has no consequence uh, other than that. And then on line uh, 60 and 61, we're simply retrieving the size of the um, uh, video frame. And then on line 64, uh, this is important, uh, here we're doing some pre-processing on the image frame, calling this method blob from image. So there are several uh, arguments here, and we'll go through these. Um, but this, all this has to do with is doing some pre-processing on the input image and putting it in the proper format uh, so that we can then perform uh, inference on that image. So it takes as input the uh, uh, image frame from the video stream. This next argument is the scale factor. And recall that the scale factor in that YAML file was 1. Uh, but that's not always the case. When models are trained, sometimes the images are scaled uh, to different ranges. And if that was the case, this would have been something other than 1. Then this is the uh, input width and height of the images. So that was 300 by 300. And we've identified that up above. 
And then this is the mean value, uh, which is going to be subtracted uh, from all the images. And then there's this flag swap RB. Uh, RB stands for red blue. Notice that that's equal to false. And the reason for that is that both CAFE and OpenCV use the same convention for uh, the three color channels. Uh, but some models use a different convention. And in those cases, you'd have to swap the red and the blue channels. And then finally, there's this last input argument crop. Uh, this last argument uh, indicates that you can either crop your um, input image to be the correct size or you can resize it. So because crop is set to uh, false, that means we're going to simply resize the image to be 300 by 300. And then this function call then returns a um, blob representation of the input image frame with all that pre-processing handled and then there's also a format change. And then uh, we pass that blob representation of the image to this um, function set input and that uh, prepares it for for inference and then this very next line a uh, net dot forward uh, makes a forward pass through the network and is performing inference on this um, representation of our input image and then for some number of detections returned by the inference we're going to loop over all those detections and uh, right here we're going to determine if the confidence for a particular detection uh, exceeds the detection threshold and if it does, we'll proceed further and uh, query the detections uh, list for the bounding box coordinates of that particular detection. And then the rest of the code here is um, going to render a bounding box uh, rectangle for the detection on the image frame right here. And then we're also going to uh, build a text string that indicates the confidence level for the detection and uh, annotate the uh, image frame um, using OpenCV uh, rectangle and put text functions right here. And then once we're done processing all the detections, uh, we'll finally call this get performance profile function, which is going to return for us the time required to perform inference. And we're going to convert that to milliseconds and then build another text string here and continue to annotate the frame with the amount of time that it took uh, to perform the inference. And then finally, we're going to use IM show to display that annotated frame uh, to the output window. So that's all there is. There isn't much uh, code required to perform inference on the model. And in fact, most of this code here is related to uh, annotating the frame itself. So at this point, we're ready to go ahead and execute the script. And when we do that, we'll cycle through some uh, demonstrations and see just how this performs. So here you can see the model is detecting my face uh, uh, very nicely and I can um, obscure my face a little bit with my hand and it still does a nice job of detecting my face. The reason I like using the video stream is that uh, it's just a lot of fun to experiment with. Uh, you can hold up images to the camera and um, experiment with the uh, scale and orientation of the images in real time. And uh, so we're going to do that. I've uh, got a magazine here that I found a lot of interesting images in. And um, so we'll cycle through that and we'll see what you think. So I'll scooch out of the way here and we'll get started in just a second. So in this first image here, you can see the boy's face is in a downward pose. And also his bangs are obscuring his forehead and even a portion of his uh, eyes. Yet the model still performs uh, nicely in detecting his face. So we thought we'd start with this image and then uh, progress to some that are a little bit more difficult. In this next image here, you can see the young girl's uh, face is also in a downward pose, but is also a profile view. And then of course she's wearing eyeglasses, which uh, may present an additional challenge. Yet the model still uh, performs nicely. These next couple of images have a mixture of the face as well as uh, some uh, graphics uh, mixed in so kind of a mixed media obscuration of the face if you will and uh, the model does very nicely on this one and here's another example on the opposing page and in this case notice the uh, the different scales of the images that are being detected uh, but the model uh, still is uh, handling things very nicely so this next one uh, coming up is my favorite primarily because it's the most impressive so take a look at this As you can see, the woman's face is heavily occluded and there's even been some manipulation of the image uh, in the area around her eyes and also around her chin and mouth, almost a blurring to some extent. So those both represent significant challenges, yet the model is able to uh, detect her face uh, fairly well 
And uh, we hope this gets you really excited about computer vision and especially deep neural networks. Uh, just remember that you don't have to train your own models. You can uh, use a pre-trained model like we've done here in this demonstration and write just a small amount of code to do your own testing with your own images. So that's all we wanted to cover, and we encourage you to do that, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.